Okay. Now let us see how much it will be for 9.85. Okay. So what we have is 9.85 is the stated rate divided by monthly. So it, there are 12 months in a year. Okay. So this is 0 0.82. But I have to take the percentage also. Percentage. On that I have to add 1. Right? Now I have to do y to the power x. How much will be y to the power x to the power number of period? How many periods are there? 12. Right? And then you do minus 1 into 100. So 10.3071 is the rate is the effective annual rate when you compound monthly. You can store it in 8. So you can now compare. Recall 9 was 10.38. Recall 8 is 10.30. So this is how we'll compute for the effective annual rate. Now one thing which I want to uh, stress over here is the rates that we are using are called as discrete rate. Now discrete rate is when the number of compounding when the number of compounding in one year is countable, you can count that. Here we can count the number of compounding. Monthly is 12, weekly is 52, daily is 365. Okay. Even when you do one second, you can find out the number of uh, second in a year. Right. So what if you compound such a way that the number of compounding is very large. So think about it, I can increase the frequency of compounding. When I am compounding for one year, compounding is this. I compound for monthly, it will be more. If I compound daily, it will be more. If I compound, let's say hourly, it will be more. Okay. So number of periods is increasing. Okay. Now you can compound it for second. You can compound it at microsecond level. You can compound it at nanosecond level. You can compound it at picosecond level. But it, everywhere, if, even if you compound picosecond, you know how many picoseconds are there in one year. Right? But what if, if I compound such a way when the number of compounding is very, very large. Okay? It is infinite. That means, what I am saying is, every moment, Every moment it is compounding. Getting the idea? Every moment it is getting compounded. When it is getting every moment compounded, you cannot use the formula Fv equal to Pv1 plus R to the power n. This formula will not work. Okay. So what we have is, we have a concept of continuous compounding rates. Okay. Please note that this is not in time value of money, but since we are doing future value, present value, it makes sense to cover this concept now. So we have continuous rates. Okay. Continuous rate is when the number of compounding is infinite. In such case, the future value is written as present value into e to the power of rt, where r is in rate per annum, okay. but that is annual rate, and t is the time in years. Okay. So the future value will be written as present value into e to the power t. Present value how you will write? Future value divided by e to the power t or it can also be written as present value equal to future value e to the power minus rt because 1 by e to the power rt is e to the power minus rt. Okay. Now I have a question for you. Okay. Let's say you are you are depositing dollar hundred today. Okay, the rate is continuous compounded, ten percent per annum. Okay, how much money you will get after two years? So first two years, and how much money you will get after one year? Two quick questions. So let's say I will compute it for one year. You have to compute it for the two year. Okay, so first, what is the equation we'll write? Future value will be equal to present value e to the power rt is the equation. So present value is 100. e, what is r? r is 10%. Please note that when you are using for e to the power, you will convert r into the percentage. So you have 0 0.1. 
and time is how many years? One year. So e to the power point one into one. Okay, and let us see how we solve this in our calculator. Okay, in our calculator we can solve this using a button. If you see over here above ln, so this is ln button. Okay, so you have over here ln. Above ln, if you see e to the power x is mentioned. Okay, so that means you can use the second function, second button, and this ln button to use e to the power x. Okay, now let us see. We we have to find out point one to the power into one. So zero point one into one will be point one only. I have to find e to the power. So I'll press this second, and then press this ln. Okay, so it will be one point one zero five two. Now you multiply with hundred, so you will be getting hundred and ten point five one seven one rupee after one year. Okay, so hundred and ten point five one seven one will be you will be getting after one year. Okay, how much you will get after two year? Okay, so what we will have is instead of this hundred two point one, what we will be having is. Future value will be hundred into e to the power of point one into two, right? So this is what we'll be computing. So what we you will do is your zero point one into two or point two second ln one point two two into oh sorry again you have to multiply with ten. So, hundred twenty-two point one. Let us store this value for in six. Okay. Okay. Now, I have got like uh, money in one year and two year. Okay. A quick question: What is your effective annual rate? When this rate is continuously compounded, what is your effective annual rate? So, going back to the value we had stored for one year. So, we recall seven. After one year, my money became one hundred and ten point five one. So can I say that whatever money you had, one hundred and ten point five one. So you had one hundred and ten point five one seven one. That is your future value, right? Minus the amount that you had invested divided by one hundred will be your return effectively you got in one year. So can I say my return is? Ten point five one seven one percentage, right? Now, same way, if I want to find out the formula for effective annual rate for this compounding in the uh, continuous compounding, can I say that for one year future value will be P V into e to the power r because t will be one, so we can just write e to the power r. So future value will be. So I have this e to the power e effective annual rate is given as F V minus P V by P V. F V is P V e to the power r minus P V divided by P V. So what is the formula for effective annual rate? Effective annual rate can we say it it is e to the power r minus one when the rate is continuously compounded. So now we have got this effective annual rate. Okay, so we have got this effective. It is only for one year. Only for one year we got this. The rate we have got is ten point five one seven one. Okay. Now, can you guys use this rate? So let's say I am saying that effective annual rate is given as ten point five one seven one. What is the amount future value will be after two years? My question is clear. That means you are getting. The rate effectively in one year is ten point five one seven one. How much effectively you get in two years? Okay, so it is nothing but the same problem. Only thing is, what I am asking you is solve differently. So what I am saying is, in your investment, effectively you are getting in one year as one ten point five one seven one. Right? I want that in. If I get effective annual rate as ten point five one seven one, if I invest hundred dollar. How much it will become after two year? How much it will become? Can I say that amount it will become is F V will be equal to P V? Okay. Now, please correct me if I wrong. If I am wrong over here, 
एफ बी इक्वल टू पीवी वन प्लस इफेक्टिव एनुअल रेट टू दावर नंबर ऑफ इयर्स प्लीज नो डेट इवन दो इट इज अंटिन्यूस कंपाउंडेड वंस आई हैॉट द इफेक्टिव एनुअल रेट आई डू नॉट नीड टू बॉदर वेदर इट्स कंटिन्यूस कंपाउंडेड और इट इज डिस्क्रीट कंपाउंडेड What I have to bother is once I got the effective annual rate, it is working like a discrete compounding. Okay, so let's see. My PV is how much? Hundred. My effective annual rate is one zero five one seven one. I will do it square. Okay, so let's see in our calculator what happens. Okay, so I will compute this minus hundred. so this is the rate effective annual rate let us take a percentage of this which is 0.1052 add 1 over here okay i want square of this you do not need to do y to the power x2 because for square you directly have a button you do square right you multiply with 100 okay let us store this value in 5 okay our real value where we are stored It is stored in six. Let us see. Recall six. Same case, right? So if you want to find out if there is any difference, recall five minus recall six. Zero. It is one into ten to the power ten to the power minus ten. Okay, so it is zero. Okay, point zero 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 zero. So that means that once you have got an effective annual rate. Okay. If somebody asks you to find out the investment after ten year, fifteen year, doesn't matter. What you have is you can write future value equal to present value into one plus effective annual rate to the power n, where n is the number of years. Because this you have computed for per year. What what I am trying to emphasize over here is that you have. Computed the effective annual rate. Okay, for a continuous compounded or a discrete compounded does not does not bother. Once you have got the effective annual rate, okay, and you somebody asks you to find out how much money you will be getting in five year, what you will be saying is, okay, I have already got that in one year I am getting this rate, okay, EAR. So if I invest hundred rupees, after one year I will get. Hundred into one plus EAR, right? So this is the amount you get over here. Now, so the next year again you will be getting EAR rate because this is your effective annual rate, right? So this is per year rate you will be getting. So what will happen is on this amount next year you will again multiply with one plus EAR and you get this amount. The third year what you will do is again multiply with. whatever is this value so this will be the value over here okay then multiply with 1 plus er you will get the value over here like that way you can do for fourth year and five year also so you will multiply this with okay so your er will become 100 into one uh, your amount will become so this is the fv amount right so because if you see this formula is nothing different than fv equal to pv1 plus i by y to the power n here we had said that this is the interest rate per period or periodic rate this is the number of periods okay this is what we are saying is here you know that this is a interest per period means it is one year what is the rate in one year and this is the number of year right so there is a very very much equivalence between the two formulas